I give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, which in Hebrew are the wonderful names of the Creator, our Heavenly Father, I Am, which this world has named God, and His beloved anointed Son, which this world has named Jesus. I give honor, respect, and thanks to all the true, faithful, and sincere apostles, elders, prophets, and torchbearers of the nation of Israel, who have willingly endured and risked much to bring forth the truth. Thank you, brothers. In this chapter, we are going to continue where we left off in the last chapter. In the last chapter, we began to talk about World War III. And in this chapter, we are going to continue to talk about World War III. And in this way, we can talk about the prophecies for the other nations. Again, not every one of the other nations is a wicked, evil person. Not every one of the other nations is going to die. So, let's jump back in. And we're going to go to Revelations chapter 11, verse 14. The second woe is past. So from 1914 to 1918, World War I was waged. It has been 101 years since the end of World War I. From 1939 to 1945, World War II was waged. It has been 74 years since the end of World War II. So, Mystery Babylon, America, Esau, Edom, the Edomites, are currently choking other nations to starvation with sanctions. Sanctions, by the way, means we're cutting your money off and you can't do business. So you can't get the medicines you need into your country. You can't get the food you need into your country. You can't do business with other nations. So they're literally starving other countries out, literally starving them. Also, Mystery Babylon America and her allies with NATO have surrounded Russia, which has upset Russia greatly. Uh, Mystery Babylon is also sending its ships near islands that China has claimed as their own. And China keeps saying, stop doing that. Stop doing that. We strongly protest to that. Stop that. Mystery Babylon does war exercises on the Korean Peninsula that agitate and aggravate North Korea, who has nuclear technology, by the way. And they've sent warships and B-52 bombers to be near Iran. These are just some of the ways that Esau is taking that boot that he has on the neck of other countries and pressing down even harder and harder and harder. And these other nations do not like it at all. At all. Revelations eleven fourteen. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. As it is written, this earth is primed right now, and it'll happen quickly. You'll get up in the morning, you'll have your cup of coffee, your cup of tea, you'll head out to go to work, and uh, you'll be at work and you think, oh, I'm going to go to lunch. And then all of a sudden, you're going to hear something. And you'll think, well, I, I, no, it, it, it can't be this. This is something like this should take months to happen. No, no, quickly, quickly, quickly. One, one country does one thing by accident. Another country does another thing by accident. Next thing you know. Now, what is the purpose of World War Three? Let's go to Joel 3, and we'll start at 2. I, meaning Yahweh, will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. The valley of Jehoshaphat is the valley of decision. And all these other nations are making decisions right now. For themselves, very bad decisions. <laughs> For themselves, these are very bad decisions. 
But to bring forth the purpose of Yahweh, yeah, they're making these decisions. They are making these decisions so that they are all gathered together in war because it's now time to bring Israel out of their captivity and to pay back the other nations who have done wickedly and who have been confederate against Yahweh's holy, chosen, and peculiar. It's now time for their judgment. This is why World War III is going to occur. It is judgment. And all nations will be involved. Let's jump down to verse 7. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them, and will return your recompense upon your own head. So for Israelites who are deeply concerned, they say, well, you know, I live in um, Mystery Babylon. I live in America. You're talking about nuclear destruction of America. That means I'm going to die when these bombs come. No, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them. Literally, Yahweh Shai and the angels are going to come. They're going to come in the chariots, what most people call uh, UFOs. They're going to come in the chariots and they're going to lift us up out of where we are. Lift us up out of where we are before the bombs drop. If you are the 144,000 of Yahweh's elect and you are the one third, the remnant, the true believers upon Yahweh Shai, upon Yahweh, upon this Bible, you will be brought out of where you are in safety in safety the father has the power to do all things he wouldn't bring us this far to leave us as long as we are truly with him he is with us let's go now to Isaiah 34 and we'll start at 2 for the indignation of Yahweh is upon all nations and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. This will happen to the armies of the other nations. Those that live by the sword must die by the sword. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood melted thermonuclear warheads thermonuclear war they shall be melted melted and all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll and all their host shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine and as a falling fig from the fig tree and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll that's that mushroom cloud that's that mushroom cloud when those thermonuclear warheads go off world war three is coming because the father says it's coming he's purposed it's coming let's jump down to eight for it is the day of Yahweh's vengeance and the year of recompense for the controversy of Zion. You want to cut us off from being a nation? You want to cut us off from our heritage and our father? You want to exhort yourself that you are Yahweh Shai and that you are Yahweh, Esau, Edom, the Edomites? Fine. World War Three is the day of judgment. World War Three is the day of Yahweh's vengeance. His vengeance. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land therefore shall become burning pitch, thermonuclear destruction. It shall not be quenched night or day, the smoke thereof shall go up forever, from generation to generation it shall lie waste, none shall pass through it forever and ever. So this is the prophecy for Mystery Babylon, America. It's going to burn forever and ever as a memorial unto the true wickedness. Because, as I've said in a previous chapter, 
Not everyone of the other nations is a wicked, evil person. They've just followed the ways of their wicked, evil leaders. They followed their ways. And the head nation, Mystery Babylon, the last great kingdom led by Esau, Edom, the Edomites, has taught the other nations of the earth to err grievously, grievously. All their ways, all Mystery Babylon's ways, they've, they've worked hard to spread them on the earth. He said, you want to do business with us? Follow our customs. Follow all of our filthy customs. That's why Mystery Babylon has to burn forever as a memorial. We're going to jump down to verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of Yahweh and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded and his spirit it hath gathered them. This book is telling you what's going to happen. Don't question it. Don't question the book. Don't question Yahweh. If you truly want to understand, read the book. Get understanding. Get wisdom. Yahweh is a man of war. Let's go to Isaiah 64 and 2. As when the melting fire burneth, the fire causeth the waters to boil, to make thy name known to thy adversaries, that the nations may tremble at thy presence. Thermonuclear warfare. Waters boiling. Melting fire burning. And the other nations will know that he has done this to bring his holy, chosen, peculiar people home. That his judgment is terrible. This is to show the earth what happens when you go against Yahweh, when you go against his son, Yahweh Shai, and when you go against his chosen, Israel. That the nations may tremble at thy presence. We'll go now to Jeremiah 10 and 10. But Yahweh is the true power. He is the living power and an everlasting king. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble. Those nukes. <laughs> and you have to understand this. So Nagasaki and Hiroshima were the beginnings of these nukes. What they've done since they've dropped those bombs, they've made them more potent, more powerful, more deadly. When they start dropping, nothing can be done. You have to understand that nothing can be done. Their destruction is going to be utter, horrible, horrendous, and terrible. And the nations shall not be able to abide his indignation. They can't fight it off. They can't save themselves from it. There's no place to hide. There's nowhere to go. You can't buy your way out. For those who shall be judged, this judgment with nukes, it's, wow. Wow. It's going to be. And for my brothers and sisters of, of Israel who want to stay in this world following these customs following their doctrines and their policies you're going to feel that fire you're going to feel it you're going to feel it this is why Yahweh Shai came to give you grace Israel that you may be forgiven of your sins Isaiah 52 and 10 Yahweh hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our power. His holy arm is Yahawashai, our King of Kings, and he's coming with the angels, the heavenly host, and everyone on earth is going to see it. And he is going to judge this earth in righteousness. So, 
It shall happen as Yahweh has purposed it. It shall. And no one can withstand it. No one. No one can escape from it. No one can defend against it. If Yahweh has said that fire is going to be upon you, it's going to be upon you. Let's go now to 2 Ezra chapter 7, verse 6. 2 Ezra is in the Apocrypha, the middle book of the Bible. There is also another thing. A city is builded and set upon a broad field and is full of all good things. This is the kingdom, the kingdom to come here on earth for Israel. For Israel. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall. That dangerous place to fall is here in this world. In this world. This world's customs and policies and doctrines. It's blasphemies and it's lies. This is a dangerous place to fall. Like as if there were fire on the right hand. That is the second death. Thermo nuclear war and on the left a deep water that was the flood that was the first death that was the flood let's jump down to verse 9 if this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance if he never shall pass the danger set before it how shall he receive this inheritance you've got to earn your way home you must as Israel earn your way home you must earn your way home through repentance and faith and practicing the righteous acts and remembering who you are and turning back towards our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And I said, It is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, Even so also is Israel's portion. This is what we must do. We must walk that straight and narrow path between the first death and the second death to get into the kingdom by doing the work set for us by our Father. By believing this Bible, by believing our Father, by believing Yahweh Shai, our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords, by believing the prophets, by believing this book, by living a righteous life to the best of your ability here in captivity. Verse 11, because for their sakes, I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now is done. This is another reason why they say the Apocrypha is not um, an approved book, because it tells you right here. And I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. So Israel must do this. Because for their sakes, whose sakes? Israel's sakes, I made the world. Meditate on that scripture for a while. Here's the last scripture we're going to go to in this chapter. We're now going to go to Second Peter chapter three verse. 10. But the day of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night. Like I said earlier, you'll be out doing your day. Maybe you think about going to have lunch and then you'll hear something. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. Nukes dropping, exploding, blowing up. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat thermonuclear fire precept upon precept line upon line here a little there a little and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up this is serious business, Israel. This is serious business, Israel. 
Make no mistake about it, World War III and the nuclear destruction of America are coming. It will coincide exactly with the return of our King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Savior, High Priest, and Brother, Yahawashai. Thus saith Yahweh. Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Wherefore Yahweh also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Yahawashai every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Yahweh Shai is Lord to the glory of Yahweh the Father. As it is written, thus saith Yahweh, and nothing can stop it. This is a final warning, Israel. Shake off this world. Remember who you are and come home. All praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai.